Because before that, you were always with your parents. Yep. Now you're into in the real world. Life. Exactly, you're in the real world. You're, you're, who, you're about to become who you are for the rest of your life. So if you're about to become a leader, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a volunteer, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a serviceman, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a follower, that's, that's when, when it shows, shows up too. And that's the, mo the most critical yeah. years of your life is that it's college. Kind of and join an organization that its vision has an Islamic component to it. Don't go into an organization that's a waste of time. It's based on entertainment. It's based on hanging out or chilling. It's based on an idea that does not have, it doesn't fit with our identity as Muslims. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to target this movement, but like, like the Pan-African Student Association, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand why Muslims join that type of group. You know what I mean? I just don't see the vision where it lines up. And sometimes they do like, African night and stuff like that. And at least to Haram. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of these, uh, <laughs> uh, what I call racial groups. Or, yeah. Or specific, very specific cultural groups. Exactly. And I, I with all due respect, I, I don't think that's good. I don't that's think that's not healthy. good. No. That's not healthy at all. That's no. not healthy. Yep. You, or a specific you, country like a t t Tunisian group, <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian <laughs> group. <laughs> there's only, there was only a few of you there. <laughs> or a, like an a, a Arab group or an African group. I would advise all of my young brothers and sisters, do not join those groups. Because all that does is it drives more of a wedge in the community. Yep. Drives more division and, and yep. we don't need that. We really don't. We have enough on our plate. And their foundation is not deen, which means the platform is open for halal and haram. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salliyan ala muhammadin wa alihi wa mantala. Dean Love here, we're back with another episode. Always try to leave some type of impact and bring you guys some type of beneficial content. And that's the, uh, one of the biggest reasons why we really uh, do this is being involved in the da'wah and in the works that we do is Allah subhanahu, we're hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us barakah in our lives uh, by uh, conveying his message and reaching as many people as possible. So this is one, Hubbu Deen, we love the Deen because that's the source of life, fi dunya wa fil akhirah. So that's our vision. And so inshallah ta'ala, whenever you see Dean Love anywhere, share it, spread it. Uh, and if you have any ideas and uh, feedback for us, please give it to us. You'll find all of our info on uh, the footnotes here and on most of our videos, hopefully. Uh, and if there isn't, let us know or leave us the comments anytime. So today we have a very interesting topic. And we have, of course, one of the most, the one and only, the honorable guest, <laughs> Muhammad Najah. <laughs> Wa alaykum salam. A brother that we love. And Dean Love loves because he's such a great role model and a mentor for a lot of youth. Um, and um, he leaves such a, uh, because of his impact, this is why we're both here together today. And he's an amazing like individual. Like uh, he does greater things that we do. We just sit in front of the camera. No, he's, got, he's the guy doing everything in the no, background. He's like, I'm looking for having me. I'm honored to be here. So today, we got an amazing topic for you guys. And that's surviving college. We know many of our audience and a lot of young Muslims, and the majority of them, they're all attending school. So today we're going to talk about surviving college. Me and both, uh, Ustaz Muhammad Najah, we both went to uh, college. And Alhamdulillah, we were blessed to finish it. And so we asked Muhammad Jama to be involved in this video. He's like, nah, I'm not in on, in on this one. <laughs> so inshallah, surviving college and the dynamics that surround that. Ustaz. Man. Jump on it, jump on it, stat. College, you bring back memories. <laughs> uh, I went to college subhanAllah, for six years, so I definitely have uh, oh. a, lot of, uh, a lot of things to talk about here. SubhanAllah, one of the things about college is, is that it's, it's an experience. It's definitely an experience. And that's why you see, SubhanAllah, the, the non-Muslims, they go crazy. When, to them, it's a really exciting experience. Why? Because it's the first time they get to live without their parents. Which means what? No supervision whatsoever. Oh. SubhanAllah. And that's, for us, it's not like that because who's our supervisor? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas for the non-Muslims, they don't have that kind of supervision. So to them, it's a green light to do everything haram and everything that they can do. Everything they couldn't get away with with their parents, now they can do it. Now they have green light, subhanAllah. And it's, 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 it's sort of that experience that they really look forward to. And that's one of the reasons why you find a lot of the haram happening on college campuses. A lot of the drinking, a lot of the zina, a lot of all that happening on college campuses. Why? Because there's no supervision anymore. Adult supervision, I mean, they're all adults now. But parental supervision is not there anymore. Yeah. And that's where, subhanAllah, that's where a lot of our Muslim youth fall into. Because some of that... That environment. Yeah, exactly. And the parental supervision from our parents goes away as well. So now we have a lot of green light to do a lot more things than we, that we couldn't have done before. And it opens a lot of doors that weren't open for us before. And Shaitan definitely gets his way with a lot of things that he couldn't have gotten with before. And it definitely brings a whole new 
experience in a whole new life for a lot of Muslims. Yeah, subhanAllah. So that hit, hit the point, and that's the danger with college. Sometimes you'll see somebody come in one way and totally leave as a different way. Mm -hmm. And we want that to be a good thing. Hopefully, a person came in mediocre and they became a better person and they grow uh, in, the, in matters of dunya, in matters of deen, and they become a more grown individual who's independent and so on and so forth. That's great. But on the other hand, what's happening is that somebody would come into college, uh, a good, came from their parents, a good kid, a good son, a good girl, and then in the matter of those years, they completely change. And I've seen that mm -hmm. right in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. I've seen people change uh, in a matter of time span. So we're going to ask Stat some tough questions, and he's on the hot seat. <laughs> Stat, do you recommend anybody to um, sleep in the dorms in colleges? Uh, I would say absolutely not. Uh, I have seen what, what dorms have, and I have seen what happens in dorms, and it is definitely not something any Muslim should go through. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, protect yeah. us all from, yeah. from whatever happens in dorms. Yeah. But it is not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased to see any of us see. And this is something that us Muslims should never do, is put ourselves in situations where... That, you, that you, you know by default, you'll fall. Even if you think you're the strongest person, you won't fall. Yeah. The shaitan will find ways. He's smarter than you, he's better than you in a lot of things, and he will find ways to make you fall. Yeah. And we are as instructed as Muslims not to put ourselves in, haram, in harm's way, in haram's way, because we never know what could happen. So you putting yourself in haram's way, even if you're not committing it, you're in the gray area already. Yeah. And that's something you should definitely avoid. And yeah. dorms, no comment. This is no comment. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much that goes on that... Uh, that it, it, it's, you know, you can't, you can't. Same thing here. I agree with that. You should, this is the biggest mistake somebody would make as a Muslim going to college is by living in the dorms. Wallahi. Brothers and sisters, do not. And if you're a parent watching this, do not encourage or even let your kids sleep in the dorms. This is something I'll tell you my own personal story. My mom, when we were moving up here to go to college and, and me and my brother and everything, she did not do one thing, which is let us stay in the dorms. We lived in a different city. I was coming to school here in the Twin Cities, right? She moved out of that city just to make sure that we have a house to live in and we don't stay in the dorms. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, I thank my mom every day. At that time, I was angry. I'm like, oh, man. I'm a grown man now. Why am I being treated this way? <laughs> you know that You know that mentality that you know, needs a lot of improvement. But now, wallahi, when, alhamdulillah, when you grow up, you gain a lot of wisdom, you know? Uh, when I look back at it, I'm like, alhamdulillah, my mom did that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things right now that you might be thinking your parents are wrong for it, but in a matter of a few years, you'll be like, alhamdulillah, my parents. And are wallahi, an intelligent person, no yeah. matter what, yeah. would never want to do that. Because yeah. if you look at it from a financial standpoint, from a stress standpoint, from everything, you get free laundry, you get free rent, you get free food, come on. Come on, this. why would you not do that? Wallahi, the only person that wants to live in a dorm is the person that has evil on their minds and they want to commit evil. Yeah. Otherwise, there really, there's really no... I mean, there's, there's circumstances where someone might yeah. live far or something else. Yeah. There are exceptions. But the default is, especially for us Muslims, it's easier for us because culturally speaking, we're not... You know, a lot of Muslims, they're expected and required to leave their house as soon as they're 18. Yeah. But for us, that's not an issue. No. So most of us can live with our parents and enjoy the, the living with our parents and not have to worry about all yeah. of the stuff that, that others would have to worry about. You get to save money, you get to worry, focus on your school, have to, yeah. having to worry about you know, paying bills and all that stuff, subhanAllah. And at the same time, you're, you're saving your deen and yourself. SubhanAllah. You can't go wrong like that. You cannot go wrong with that. So, okay, so let's say I, I'm not staying uh, in the dorms because it's a, it's, it's a bad environment. I know myself and I can't stay with, at home because let's say my parents live far and it's just too far. So if I want to live with people, what do you recommend? Well, then there are lots of uh, uh, forums and such where you can meet good people that you can live with. Yeah. And it's definitely a, a good opportunity to meet new Muslim brothers and definitely yeah. have the, a good college experience with good people that will support you and help yeah. you through the college experience yeah. in, a, in a halal Islamic manner. Yeah. There are definitely, uh, I know, a lot of houses and, 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 uh, and dorms around, the, uh, called, the, not dorms, yeah. but, you know, like, private houses. Rental, yeah, rental. Where you can rent a house with Muslim brothers, you know, you get to wake each other up for Fajr every day, you get to eat halal food every day, yeah. you get to share your different cuisine if you're from different cultures. It's very nice, very convenient, very, nice. very wonderful experience. Experience, enjoyable as well if you want to you know live, live closer to campus it's definitely an opportunity yeah but, uh, but that's definitely a, a more recommended thing to do yes yes than yes. living in the dorms yes absolutely, absolutely. yeah it, the, living the, it's not even comparison you don't even go there it's yeah. just not a not, not a thing yeah it shouldn't be a thing for a Muslim yeah it's, it should either be you know living privately with a group of brothers or sisters that uh, are around campus or living with your parents where you should be okay beautiful I think that's I agree with everything you said if you can live with other people that are good people, not people yes. that 
condition mm -hmm. good people because we know at home majority of the time 99.9% it's a good environment because mm -hmm. your parents want the best for you but when you come out to the real world and you're meeting new people you have to fill them out filter them out if you just pick anybody and live with them well you'll get to know them definitely <laughs> and they, they might be a really really bad influence on you mm -hmm. you might end up losing out on school you might not even learn because the type of environment they create for you because mm -hmm. where you live is very sensitive place it is, it is yeah good. you don't want to allow any everybody to be in there especially after college where you go home yeah. you're tired you want to you want somewhere you want a stress-free environment where yeah. you can go and and you know relax and yeah. do your homework and do all those things in a, in a, yeah. in a good environment yeah. but if you're living in an environment where there's constant you know stress and yeah and haram things going on around you yeah. and you'll be drinking it's, it's, just, it's not it's not healthy at all it's not yeah healthy. Second thing is that a lot of students, when they come into um, a college, they're forced to take out loans or they might not be able to pay for it or something like that. What should a person do before they get into that? Like, it's a very big topic, but what should a person do financially when, when, when they come into college? Financial independence is always a great thing to have. Yeah. Um, if you can definitely pay for your college yeah. by yourself through your own means, that is definitely That's the, the best, best thing. thing. However, I do realize that it's not a very feasible thing for a lot of us. Yeah. And uh, I would definitely recommend financial aid. It's a big one. Yeah. Always get good, good, uh, good help from financial aid. Scholarships is a big one, especially for a lot of Muslim communities. There's a lot of scholarships available for yeah. uh, for different backgrounds, different races, different. Yeah. They, there's a lot of opportunity for that. So I'm I'm pretty sure if one worked hard enough, they could get a free ride through throughout yeah. their entire college without having to worry about paying for anything. But also, you know, uh, don't be shy to get help from people around you. If you need to get a loan from your parents, yeah. from a, uh, you know, a good friend of yours, somebody that has money, for example, uh, try, try to make it halal-free, you know, halal interest-free uh, loan. Uh, that's a very good idea. Because definitely, you know, the last thing you want to do is fund your future Education. financial success starting by interest. Now, I do realize there's a lot of difference of opinion between yeah. the scholars as to whether or not, uh, you know, college loans are considered a necessity, yeah. whereas you can uh, get them, get, get, get loans. But if you can do it without them, then definitely do it. Don't, you know, if you can live a little bit more conservative life and, yeah. and not have to go through loans, yeah. that is definitely the right way to do it. And that's definitely the, the better way in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what I've seen. That I've seen that some brothers, I've seen both sides. Some brothers, because they wanted to live the Basha lifestyle, they mm -hmm. took out loans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some brothers and sisters that I went to school with. Yep. And then by the time we, when we were done with school, right? Because the other group, they didn't do that. They lived a very tight life, mm -hmm. tight budget, and they were paying monthly fees to school just mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't go into uh, debt or loans. Mm -hmm. By the time when we were both done, both groups, you know, I was paying out of my pocket for school. Mm -hmm. The little that was left, that, a lot was left over, I was paying out of pocket. And then some other people, they took the loans process. And so when we got out of school, those people had to be, they were in debt like 60, 60 G, uh, 80 G, Absolutely. 70 G. And you see them subhanAllah now, especially at the, at the workforce. He's oh the guy's been God. working for 30 years and he's still paying off his he's college loans. Subhanallah. Why? What? Just because you yeah, had to live that lavish life when you were, during that four years? Yeah. You can not, su you know, suffer a little bit for four years, but then save yourself the headache of 30 years yeah. or however many years of paying off that debt. It's not easy. It's not easy. And subhanAllah is definitely something... It's gonna be stick with you for a long time. Yeah. Imagine you have kids, you have to pay your bills, you have your car, your car payments, your you know your house payments, whatever it is, and then on top of that you have your college payments. Yeah. You see that on your bank account every single month for the next thirty years of your life. <laughs> That's not good, man. That's not good. And then on top of that, what they do to you is the interest comes after six months if you're not able to pay. It. Mm -hmm. And so the seventy thousand turns into like a two hundred thousand yep. dollars, and that's the really sad part. So we encourage everybody to before you take out a loan, be careful. Don't do it. Uh, sit down with people who have done it in the past who like, you know, have succeeded in college uh, mm -hmm. in regards to it financially. So another thing in college life is that um, people meet a lot of new people in, uh, in college. And uh, sometimes that can go good, and sometimes that can go really, really bad. I've seen people come into college and just because of the new group they started to hang out with, everything flipped about them. Everything about them changed. And there's so many different types of groups and people at college and everybody's sometimes a little bit separated and mm -hmm. segregated. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that stat? So in college, you will definitely meet all kinds of people. <laughs> you meet uh, the good ones, the bad ones, the hippies, the, the, the you, ugly ones. You, you name it. Right? Yeah. So it's definitely a good, a good experience because coming out of high schools and in our, in our houses, we... We're so used to one particular type of group of people. Yeah. And so definitely meeting new people brings about new ideas, new ideologies. It, it definitely grows you uh, culturally. Yeah. So it's good. You learn a lot from different people. But at the same time, you, you should, one must never forget who they are. 
keeping your identity is the most important thing, especially when you meet new people. Yeah. Because your identity will, will be lost in trying to fit in. Yeah. And one will never fit in with especially with the way things are right now, as a Muslim, you can never fit in 100%. Yeah. So you must always maintain your identity no matter what. And, and when we meet new people, always keep in mind that the, keep yourself at a good distance uh, so that you're not too, too, close, attached. too attached, too close where you get influenced, but at the same time you're not too far where you're kind of away. You yeah. want to be engaged, you want to engage yourself, you want to meet people, you want to spread your deen, you want to show who you are as a good Muslim. Yep. But at the same time, you don't want to get too close where you, you lose yourself at the same yeah. time. And always definitely meeting new uh, uh, Muslims on campus is definitely a, a good thing. Because yeah. on campus, uh, usually the MSAs or the uh, Muslim organizations are definitely strong when they are big, when they are united, when they have yep. a word. So finding the Muslims in your community, in, in, in your college, uh, attending the MSA meetings, uh, Bringing about ideas, you know, participate in these things, whether, you know, uh, just being there, being present, it helps you as an individual because then you have people you can relate with. It also helps the community, the Muslim community, because it yeah. helps it grow and it makes it have a stronger voice on yeah. campus. Yeah, definitely. The people who you hang out with in college, they shape you. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, people have influence on you. The famous hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes in, المرء على دين خريري That a person is on the religion of his friend. Absolutely. Wallahi, فَلْيَنْظُرْ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, like, you know, take heed, like, be careful of the person you consider as a friend, the people who you hang out with. Wallahi, they have huge influence on you. Absolutely. So if you mess around and you try to, try to fit in with the wrong group, mm -hmm. you're gone. And subhanAllah, back in the day, yeah. with our parents' generation, yeah. when they go to college, after four years, when they came out of college, the only thing that's changed about them is a the degree. That's yep. all they have, the degree yep. and the skill set. Nowadays, after four years, that person is changing completely. <laughs> and they've gone one of, one of many ways. They could either <laughs> become a good Muslim, they became a hippie, they became, a, uh, you know, there's so, so, many, so many isms that you could relate to in college. Yeah. And you, you basically have to get into one or the other. And if you don't are not careful, you're definitely getting into these things that are sometimes not very Islamic and not very uh, good. Which takes us to our next topic in surviving college, which is there's so many student groups and organizations in college. So that, what do you think? What should a person do coming into college as a freshman, fresh, uh, hasn't been introduced to anything else? Or if they have in the past, what's the best way to go about it? First of all, if there's any group that does the meetings on a Friday night or Saturday night, yeah. don't go. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time when they have uh, uh, functions that, you, yeah. late at night or on the weekends, yeah. most of the time it involves alcohol, it involves things that are yeah. haram. So definitely avoid those. Uh, find groups that you are interested in. For example, if you're into, I don't know, coding or you're into uh, communication or, or journalism, there's a lot of groups that cater to that. Uh, so it's good to be involved. It's good yeah. because you definitely learn a lot from these groups. Um, and I, as I said earlier, the, mo the most important thing is finding the Muslim groups and joining them and supporting them and you getting support from them. Yeah. Because together you make something by yourself, you're, you're nothing. Yeah. You will lose and they will lose. Yeah. So definitely helping out in Muslim organizations and being part of them and being active. It's not just enough to attend Jum'ah. You have to attend Jum'ah, yes, but you have to go beyond that. If you can attend local classes if there are, if you can help out with programs, if you can help you know, bring about change, if you think your MSA needs change and needs to be, grow into something bigger, yeah. help that, do that. And that's, you hit the great point, Stad, which is, Joining Muslim organizations, I think that's key. I think that's what changed a lot in my college life and my career as a college student. That was an epic time for me because what I did immediately, I came on as a, as a freshman, I joined an MSA. Mm -hmm. I was a big member uh, the night following years. I, I, I led it sometimes and I was a dialogue coordinator. I was, sure. It exposed me to so many different things that I really, really, really enjoyed it. And it really, that's what grows your skill set. Yeah. Those leadership opportunities as well. Yep. You discover yourself. Because before that, you were always with your parents. Yep. Now you're into in the this real world. Life. Exactly. You're in the real world. You're, you're, who, you're about to become who you are for the rest of your life. So if you're about to become a leader, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a volunteer, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a serviceman, that's when it shows up. If you're going to become a follower, that's, that's when, when it shows, shows up too. And that's the, the, more, the most critical yeah. years of your life is that college. Kind of life. And join an organization that its vision has an Islamic component to it. Don't go into an organization that's a waste of time, it's based on entertainment, it's based on hanging out or chilling, it's based on an idea that does not have, it doesn't fit with our identity as Muslims. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to target this movement, but like, like the Pan-African Student Association, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand why Muslims join that type of group, you know what I mean? I just don't see the vision where it lines up, and sometimes they do like, African night and stuff like that. At least to Haram. There's, you know a lot, I mean? there's a lot of these, uh, <laughs> what I call racial groups. Or, yeah. 
or specific, very specific cultural groups. Exactly. And I, I, with all due respect, I, I don't think that's good. I don't that's think that's not healthy. Good. No. That's not healthy at all. That's no. not healthy. Yep. You or a specific you, country like a t- t- Tunisian group, <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian <laughs> group. <laughs> there's all, there was only a few of you there. <laughs> or a, like a, a Arab group or an African group. I would advise all of my young brothers and sisters do not join those groups. Because all that does is it drives more of a wedge in the community. Yep. It drives more division and, and yep. we don't need that. We really don't. We have enough on our plate. And their foundation is not deen, which means the platform is open for halal and haram. Absolutely. Right? But when you open an Islamic organization, the MSA, or you start something else that is Islamic related, and some schools, they allow for you to start up an organization on your own mm-hmm. and bring people together that you have the same core values with. So join an Islamic organization and if there is the one there, start it up. Great opportunity for leadership absolutely, absolutely yeah subhanallah moving on to our next point which is there is a lot of because there isn't such a great amount level of peer pressure everybody comes out to their true form and that's some, one thing i like about college and nothing that's really dangerous mm-hmm. which is people come and they reach their full potential and they can, oh, you treat good and evil both. good and evil you know what I mean? you see their true self mm-hmm. so what happens then the floor is open for anything again the good so, become better and the, and the bad becomes worse exactly and so what ends up happening is, there's so much happening. Let's talk about the entertainment life. What are your thoughts on uh, college, college life? College. You know, unfortunately, college nowadays become entertainment. Yeah. That's what it's about. The biggest Education hype about really college, died. No, education is a side thing. It's something yeah. you do on the side when you're in college. Yeah. But the biggest hype about college is the entertainment. Yeah. The partying, the drinking, all that. That's, what's the, that's really what people get excited about, subhanAllah. And it is very, very easy to fall into these kind of things because they're everywhere. Wherever you go, you'll find flyers, you find events. Here and there, you'll find people drinking, people partying. Wherever you go, subhanAllah. Every single and weekend. It's, it's, and it's, exactly, especially on the weekend. But even on the weekdays, subhanAllah, you find those things. <laughs> even on the weekend. I don't, know, how, either, yeah. I don't know how they drink and <laughs> go to school the next day. But oh my goodness. SubhanAllah, man, they, they find ways. And SubhanAllah, I guarantee you, one of the most populated places for, for one of the most common places for shaitan is college campuses. It is. It is SubhanAllah, man, there's just absolutely the most easy way to commit haram is in, on college campuses. Oh. It's so easy. You have people supporting you to do haram. It's people helping you do haram. People facilitating haram for you. There's just no way to walk on a college campus on any good day and not commit something haram. Whether it's by looks, whether it's by saying something, seeing something, whatever it may be. Yeah. It's just haram is all around you. And the one thing that really uh, yani it gets a lot of people is just falling into these things. Because you have a good friend. He may not be uh, you know, uh, into that kind of stuff, but he invites you because his, vi- his friend invited him. And you go because you don't want to say no. And then it goes the downhill from that. The chain of reaction. It just, it, yeah, it go, it goes, it's a slippery slope. It's a very slippery slope. And one cannot really protect themselves until they take that stand and say no. I will not go to any function that has alcohol because I won't. Now your friend might come and tell you, come on, just come with this, you don't have to drink. No, that might, that might fly the first time, the second time. Then you're going to start sitting with like, people who drink. Then eventually you might want to try a sip here and there. And then subhanAllah, it, it's, it's dangerous. It is dangerous. Allah, Allah is you dangerous. must be firm from the day one. Establish rules for yourself and don't fall out of those rules. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to go down a spiral and you'll, you'll never get out, get out of it. Yeah. And subhanAllah, because it's entertainment, it's something that our nafs wants. It's something that we are designed to love and to, to gravitate towards. Right? So shaitan doesn't have to work a lot, very hard to get us to those places. Yeah. We want to go there naturally. So unless you put extra blockades and extra precautions not to go there, yeah. it's very easy to fall into. Wallah, a great strategy on escaping that is surround yourself with good people. Absolutely. Wallah. Absolutely. Go ahead, step. What are you talking about? Subhanallah. One of the best things that, you, that can protect you from these kind of things yeah. is having good friends. Because when you're with good friends, and this is something that is present in, in the teachings of our Prophet When you are with good people, when you're surrounded by good people, one, you feel ashamed of yourself to go and do things that are haram. Two, you're all constantly busy with doing good things that you don't have time to do the haram. Yeah. Right? And number three, as good people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the, the, the the, 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 the mentality of the we versus I and he will help you grow individually and Islamically yeah. and spiritually and protect you from those things. Yeah, subhanAllah. Wallahi guys do that. Brothers and sisters in college, one of the best strategies in surviving college, which is our topic, is surround yourself with good people. Wallahi, I, I mean, we're talking from experience. And yes, me and him both went to schools that were, you know, we had a good Muslim population size. Mm-hmm. So we had the options. That what do you th- what do we say do to people who go to faraway schools that are no Muslims there? What do we do? What do we say to those people? people? Who go to Fargo or Morris? <laughs> <laughs> who, does, who does that? You know what I mean? Go to USD University of South Dakota. I mean, how many Muslims go there, right? I mean, or Montana University of Montana. 
<laughs> so I got a scholarship there. I'm, I had a brother. Oh my god! I don't even want to talk about the story because it's like it breaks my heart. Because I, I, many of my students right now, they're growing up, right? They come up to me and they're like, "Man, Najib, what do you think? Uh, I want to go to college in another state." Okay, yeah. So what's the school like? It's a small school. It's, it's in a rural area. So what are you gonna do there? You need the same education here. Mm -hmm. Why are you gonna butcher yourself and like, mm -hmm. like you know? Going to a war zone without any weapons, like mm -hmm. not, no, no preparation. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on that? A, a Muslim by default cannot be a good Muslim by himself. Yeah. No matter how hard you try. And that's why there's so many things in, in our Sharia. That was a knockout line. <laughs> there's so many things in our Sharia that cultivate the, the Jama'ah. Why, why is praying in the Jama'ah so important? Because of this idea that a Muslim cannot be by themselves. Yeah. So one must always try to find places where they can surround themselves by Muslims. Yeah. And going out, you know, sometimes it's understandable there are situations where a person has to go out because they can't find, you know, they can't be accepted here or they can't, you know, find scholarships here. It, it happens. Yeah. But one must always, one try to find, then you have to go the extra mile of going to your local masjid, finding halaqas or durus. If you can't do that, going online, finding things that you can follow, stick to online, connect with your friends back here, if you, back wherever your, your home is, talk to your parents on a daily basis. Oh my Keep God. yourself as attached as possible. It's a lot of work. It, it, it's a lot of work, but yeah. one, one must do it if they want yeah. to. If, if you're going to do that. Exactly. If you, have to, if you want to keep your Muslim identity, you have to. Yeah. Because when you go to college, subhanAllah, who, who, most people who go to college, they're the, you know, the, the, the most liberal people yeah. uh, in, in, in society. There's, there's a lot of statistics that were done where they say the biggest population of atheists is among college students. Yeah. Why? Because it, it, it's, a, it's a pool. It's a pool of different mix of ideas and, and things that are conflicting. And, and, and a Muslim who's not, who's not strong with the Iman, when they go in there and they don't have backup and support, so it's very easy to get lost. It's very easy to get shaken. It's very easy to find yourself in the midst of things that you have no answers for. And unless you have that backup, unless you have the, Muslim, the support from your Muslim brothers, your Muslim sisters, then it will be very easy to be lost. And Wallahi, may Allah Wallahi brothers, it's just stick with the jama'ah. Stick with the group of Muslims, Wallahi. Do not go off to a school where you're the only Muslim. I had a young sister come out to me a few days ago. She said, I'm the only Muslim uh, person in my school. I'm the only one who wears hijab. So I had to talk to her and be like, do this and do this and this. Strategize, you know what I mean? Somehow, some way. She's one of my students. I'm like, do this and do this and do this. And it's a tough situation. What it else is, can you is, do now? She can't leave there. Her family moved to that city. It's like... So don't put yourself at a place where you're by default at, at, at loss. Yes, exactly. Or at least at a risk, even at a risk. At a risk. You're in a great, you're in a great area. You're, Allah. You're, it's, it's, it's I had another brother, he lives in uh, Northeast, I think he lives by you, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing brother. He came to me last year, he said, hey, I'm going to UND. I said, don't do it, man. <laughs> you know, University of North Dakota, I said, don't do it. Brother, no. we have nothing against the Dakota. <laughs> Just to make that clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, love, we love North and South Dakota. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not the most ideal place for not. You know, it's not. So I said, it's not the best thing for you to do. But you're a grown man, you, know, you can make it just, but my advice, don't do it. He went. SubhanAllah. After one semester, he ran back. He left. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you do it, eh? bro, wallah, you were right, man. What I saw and what was happening, it was like, oh my goodness, I could not stay there. But that's the one that came back. That's imagine, the one that came imagine back. Imagine the ones, the ones, how, that, many, how many that went there and got Allah, SubhanAllah. That brother was intelligent. May Allah reward yeah. him for that. I mean, inshallah, I mean, but yeah. it's not easy for everybody. A lot of it's people go easy. there and they get lost, SubhanAllah. Yeah, Allah. And we, we should never put ourselves in that kind of position. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Pay the extra money or, or suffer a little bit more when yeah. you're local, surrounded by your parents and your family. Yeah. Better than going somewhere and you're all by, your, by yourself. Yeah. Surviving college, crazy topic. It's a long video, we know, but you need to watch it. This is a video that I think every college student should watch it. And you know what? I think we might even get back together and do a whole series on college because brother's not having a job. It's a crazy guy to talk to. <laughs> He's like an encyclopedia of information. <laughs> but inshallah... Um, this is a very sensitive topic. It is. Every it single, is. if you know a college student, pass this video to them. Uh, and every, if you're a parent, every, this is the video that every single parent or college student should watch. I really think because this is really beneficial information. And you know, we have our scholar here of, of the situation. Fiqh al right here. He knows the situation, like how it is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Any last advice with that surviving college? I, I would say re reach out for help. Never, never let yourself go too far without yeah. getting help. Get, get help from your parents, get help yeah. from your friends. Yeah. Reach out to people who have had the experience before yeah. and ask how they did it, how they maneuvered. Or even if it's not for non-religious things, even yeah. for, for your major, for things you want to decide. Yeah. With college, you cannot do it alone. If you, do it, if you think you're going to do it alone, you're done for. You yeah. have to get help as much as you can and yeah. don't be shy to get help. Yeah. And, the big, and the best help is who's help? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. He, yeah. he will be your best help, especially yeah. in those tough times when you find yourself alone. Yeah. He is your help. Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be of help and of assistance to all of us. I mean, I mean, I mean. Inshallah, we'll close with that. Till next time, Dean Love, spread the videos and check out all of our content. We try to make sure we have great content so that's beneficial and gets nearer to Allah. You know, that's our code of conduct. But inshallah, we'll leave you with those words. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabina wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bi Islami wa imani ahda al kawn wa zamanu Bi Islami wa imani ahda al kawn wa zamanu